All right, so we got Remnant 2 review. Let's go to the video. Now, listen, listen. I told you guys. Back at the history of new games and their sequels, oftentimes it's not until the second attempt at a bold new idea. I told you guys. Really hit their stride. June and July is like a slow month for gaming, but this June and July was good. Breakthrough sequels like Borderlands 2 and Assassin's Creed 2 before it. Remnant 2 iterates on the original to phenomenal the hunter skin, right? Oh, no, it's gunslinger gunslinger. Sorry about that. It's a gunslinger Loot and build crafting have been greatly improved to allow for countless possibilities and reasons to grow I've told y'all like this game actually looks it looks decent. I'll be real bro ditch spongy bosses aided by endless waves of minions minions and each of that thing built like a uh, one of the Zelda builds, bro, that we that we watched. And secrets to uncover, but procedurally generated, impressively replayable levels remain its killer feature. And here, they've been improved in so many ways, it's alarmingly easy to lose half a day by jumping back into the same area just to see other possibilities. Hmm. Okay. So it's like it's like addictive. Okay. When it comes to games like this. The second time's the charm. Okay. So we got IGN's review. We know, listen, we know how IGN is. We're, we're going to see if they uh... Back in 2019, a lot of us, myself included... I would give it referred to a 7. ...remnant from the ashes as Dark Souls with guns. And the sequel... Okay, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. ...agreement with that characterization. That makes sense. You and up to two allies will navigate gloriously hazardous areas packed with devilish enemies who make short work of any devilish patience to overcome its intentionally challenging levels. Yeah. It looks fun though. It looks like a fun like party game like with your friends, yeah. The story has you playing as a nameless survivor in a post-apocalyptic earth where a race of evil trees called the Root are attempting to take over the multiverse. Super weird, right? Yeah, well, the main story is not really a highlight. But that's yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say this game looks like it doesn't really have like a a, a good of a main story if that makes sense. Even though like the story looks alright, I don't think. Bro, he he only got so much strength. It is quite good. It's just that very little of it has any impact on your blank slate of a character, and it's also high concept. It often doesn't gel. Yeah, I can tell that the gameplay actually just carries the game, like the gameplay itself. Carries the game. No matter which stretch of the adventure you're working your way through, though, every second of gunplay is a totally challenging blast. And yeah, like I was about to say, yeah, I literally just said, like, the, the gameplay literally just, it, like, there's certain games that let just make. Ooh. Oh my god, wait a minute. That stopped my whole speech. To maim and dismember you. But yeah, like I said, there's just some games that. What starts is a relatively like their story mode is not really good, but like you know, the gameplay is just it covers everything. Weapons, armor, highly customizable character classes, and mods that hasn't come close to feeling stale after my first few dozen hours. A major part of what makes combat continuously feel so fresh is that you keep hopping between different worlds in the multiverse, each with their own distinct feel. I'm saying that makes sense, yeah. Battle. One of them, Nerud, is a sci-fi reality filled with violent robots, electronic gizmos, and laser guns. Oh my god! While Lassam is a fantasy... Send that man to the shower room! ...who wear bowler hats and try to cut your throat in between what I can only assume are their busy chimney-sweeping schedules. <laughs> You'll die for that. She got absolutely murked. Sometimes it's quite jarring in a good way. I mean, if you didn't know any better, would you even think that these were the same game? Uh, I'm, ooh. Ooh, who's that, The Undertaker? Also includes I mean, like The Undertaker. A bunch of boss battles. And this is one of those areas I like that though. I like that the game has like a bunch of uh, boss battles. I like that. About the first remnants boss fights lacking any real personality. I'm extremely happy to report that Remnant 2 has not only corrected this weakness, but now counts its boss fights as one of its main strengths. While there are so oh, so he was like, you know what? There's not enough boss fights, boss fights in the first game. We'll give you guys a, a bunch. Oh my god, what is that? Roly poly. Beefier version of an existing enemy you see a lot already. The vast majority are not only delightfully difficult tests of your skill and your character's build, 
but also have plenty of interesting mechanics. But what type of monster is that? That literally looks like a Zelda build. That looks like a Zelda build, bro. Get a boss for a few seconds makes your character go mad and die. And another word, ghost traps you in a haunted house and pops out of the walls to scratch your face off. What? Ooh. My personal favorite oh, no. is an unforgettable encounter where you become trapped in a maze and have to physically fight the labyrinth itself as you navigate it and avoid getting crushed by giant cubes. Bro, you better get crushed by a Rubik's Cube. Oh my god, move, move, move! In fact, that might be my new favorite boss fight oh, no. in any game. Over! It's that good. In order to stay ahead of the increasingly powerful enemies and boss fights that Remnant 2 has in store, you'll need to spend a lot of time gleefully optimizing your build. Okay, that makes sense though. And exciting decision you'll make I feel like, and then constantly iterate upon is your archetype. AKA I feel like this game makes you level up so you can like go up to the boss. And if you're not leveled up as much to take on a boss, then the boss will just destroy you. Which causes you to play the game more to level up your boss, to level, like level up the, uh, your character. Which is smart. Instead of restarting from scratch. Maybe you want to try I can't lie, the hunter looks pretty decent. I might have to go with the hunter. On the battlefield and has or, or the gu uh, gunslinger. Hits extend the duration of any skills you've got equipped. Or maybe the challenger with their area of effect, war stomp, and ability to automatically get back up after taking fatal damage. Okay. Oh my god. But the real fun comes once you unlock the ability to simultaneously equip a second archetype in the middle of the campaign. This opens up a whole new world of hybrid possibilities. Okay. The hunter and the pet like this little scenery right here it looks nice. Example, like this whole thing looks nice. I can't lie. Where you can direct your furry ally to they got the uh, Call of Duty ghost dog going crazy right now. Oh my god. Distance. Beyond archetypes, there's an absolute ton of weapons, rings, amulets, and armor to round out your build. And half a dozen I like that though. It's, it's, it's more like it's more like merrier for weapons, you know? It's not just like AK 47, gun, <laughs> Glock. <laughs> Bro, some games are just like very dry, like with their like with their like guns and just gun names. I mean, I found an ember ring. What? Oh, he's on fire. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, where's his hat? Oh, oh, run. Oh, oh. Oh, I can't lie, bro. That thing will scare me. While it only took me 20 hours to complete Remnant 2, that's only the beginning of the time. 20 hours is good, though. One of this series' characteristics, which is virtually unique within its genre, is its procedurally generated levels, storylines, and side quests that make each run feel different. It's okay. It's impressively unpredictable. Oh, how you doing? so well organized that you could play it all the way through without knowing that anything wasn't hand-built. Right up until you talk to a friend about your respective playthroughs and almost immediately realize that you aren't playing the same campaign. Wait, what? Because every world contains two possible storylines, you'll almost oh. certainly end up in different worlds in a different order, fight different bosses. I didn't know that, bro. Completely different quests along the way. I literally didn't know that. What are you playing, chess? It's not just a matter of rearranging rooms. It was 8D chess. Each run can be so dramatic, they hardly even feel like they're part of the This man's fighting a, a, a cockroach right now, bro. A daddy long leg. In one playthrough <laughs> of a realm called Yesha, I spent almost the entire time indoors traipsing through these dark corridors full of crazy... Ooh, that thing things. like lasagna. I'm sorry if you're eating lasagna, by the way. ...dense woods, and in another still, I was lost amid this maze of hovering platforms. In one run of the fantasy world Lassam, I spent the whole time in these slums. Ooh, ooh, okay. Ooh. And ne -do -wells. She said, no outsiders here. In another, I spent most of my time in these gilded palaces, fighting winged angels and armored paladins. They're almost entirely different. Cut carefully now, stranger. You don't have to start a new campaign. Who was that? Experience all of the possibilities. That man was suited and booted in metal. Oh, sorry, not metal. Of any given world. <laughs> was it, what, is, what was it? Is steel? I don't know what that was. I really don't care. Generating a fresh set of quests to complete along with it. Okay, I heard apocalypse mode was was impossible. I heard that was impossible. 
Verdict. Right, I'm giving it a seven out of ten. I'm gonna give it a seven. It's astounding to think that if I were to create, I think IGN's gonna give it a Souls likes, a eight or a seven. Shooters and my favorite procedurally generated games, Remnant Two would appear on all of those lists. I think he's, uh, he's gonna give it an eight. This is a triumphant sequel that doesn't just Okay, he's gonna give it an eight. Like genre. How much you want to bet? It's an eight. He's gonna give it an eight. Nails that concept in every way including many that the original remnant did not with completely engrossing bro say it it's an eight say it challenging and memorable boss fights oh my god build crafting options incredibly cool dynamic levels and a clever multiversal concept that allows for a ton of who's going to give it an eight one package it's very likely going to become one of my most played games this year oh it's an eight I told y'all. Part of the multiverse you find nine. You should do yourself a favor and play this gem. For more action, check out. Bro, when's the last time IGN gave a game a nine? Cause listen, it, listen. Out of all the times I've watched IGN like review games stuff like that, bro. Listen, they are like Anthony Fantano when it comes to like these games, where they are not. Honestly, I respect it. They're not afraid to like you know. Um, say what they don't like about the game, whatever. But bro, it's been a while since you know I've seen like IGN give a game a nine. That's crazy. Other than that, comment down below. Oh, uh, you know, do you guys like the game or not? It's gonna come out the 25th of July. So uh, if you guys do watch this video after the 25th, bro, comment down below if you guys like it or not. Uh, or honestly, give your own rating. I really don't care. But see you guys later for the next one. I'm out and peace.